Yo, welcome back. It's Guido, and we have a tactics talk tank review of the dreaded IS 3A, the tank that destroyed World of Tanks, or at least caused a bit of a shrill shrieking from some people. <laughs> I played this 30 times. We are going to do a standard review on this. Let's find out if, at least in my opinion, the IS-3A is the overpowered, game-destroying tank that so many claim it is. We'll do an overview. We'll take a look at the tech tree considerations, the 3D model, a comparison between its peers, my stats after 30 battles, my setup, and then some examples of gameplay. Now realize this is a reworking of a tank that already existed in the game, the IS-3A, which always had three people in it, or three crew members. It was sort of an auto-loading tank, although it didn't have the game mechanic. There was not a loader in the crew. The loading was automatic, air quotes, but there was no auto-loading game mechanic like you might see in either the Italians or the French tanks and some of the American and other various places it has crept into. You can see it right here. It looks like an IS-3 with a stock turret. Standard IS-3. Pike nose, pretty large lower plate right there. Turret's different than the standard IS-3. Just click on that guy as soon as I figure out how to get there. So we'll drop down to tier 8. Heavy tanks and the Soviets. There's the 3A. There's the IS-3. Looks a little bulkier. It's got the different turret on right there. The IS-3 has the commander's hatches, which are weak spots up on top. But other than that, essentially the same tank on the whole, different turret. We'll talk about some of the differences when we get into the comparison. Not much else to note. It's a little bit smaller than an IS-6. Roughly the same as a Defender. Low profile, pretty good camo, interestingly, for both the IS-3 and the IS-3A, which I assume is the low profile working for it right there. A front-mounted turret, which is well forward, makes side scraping a little bit problematic and having your back end poking out from cover if you're not really paying attention to where your turret is right there. But it does make going around corners and squaring up with your pike nose a little bit there much easier. All right, let's move on to the tech tree considerations. All right, this is a bit of a goofy one because there's only three crew members in there. It's not really a good crew trainer for any Soviet tank. <laughs> So it's a bit of an outlier. It has a commander, a gunner, and a driver. There's no loader, and that's the standard loadout you're going to find. Commander, gunner, loader, driver on most of your upper tier Soviet heavy tanks. Got the IS-7 over here. He actually has five crew, so it's even worse for that one. 257 with four crew. 705 has four crew. You get the picture there. It doesn't really work very well for crew training other than the three those three positions your loader and whatever tank it is you use or cruise tanks crew you use to put in the IS-3A your loader is going to be sitting on the sidelines not getting any experience out of that we'll talk about what I did in just a minute but I did it kind of just for a giggle so if you're if you're looking for a Soviet crew trainer it's not really the the best thing to use right there that is about all to say on the tech tree there are no modules to upgrade or anything like that we'll move on to the 3d model all right for the 3d model it's an is3 most people are familiar with it this is a tank that's been around since basically the beginning of the game at least the whole portion of it it's got kind of the stock turret on it so a decent turret when you're looking straight on gets a lot less strong as you're shooting it in the side which is pretty standard for any turret however it is well rounded so when you get along to the edges you're going to find those auto bounce angles and crazy things like that the pike nose is a pike nose it's got the lower plate which is quite large and slightly weak and then the upper plate which is a little stronger which works straight on the best except it exposes a lot of your lower plate the way this game is played pike noses are kind of difficult to use they're better if you're moving and wiggling a little bit so people can't aim at exactly where they want to go that's kind of the strength of a pike nose because if you start getting into the side of it, then you got a lot less arm. You can see it's just 166. So pinning into the side of that pike nose, if he is trying to angle or side scrape or over angle, is relatively easy. Also, it's got really large tracks like the other IS or the standard IS-3 does, which is going to eat heat and is 
useful for side scraping and things like that. Like I mentioned, front mounted turret right there and the top is weak like any tank would be. And then there's this really weak center spot overmatchable section right here on the top of the turret which is the same kind of weakness that the regular IS-3 has. Anything that's much taller than it looking down is going to have a bit of an advantage or anytime you're shooting from above that can be a bit of a problem. Dropping HE on that is ouch. That's going to hurt right there. So nothing else really to talk about on a 3D model. Well, let's look at the comparison. This is going to start telling a, a bit of a tale of the IS-3A. The Wargaming firepower number is 293, which is pretty low. As usual, these are all set with 100% crew, top modules if they're not a premium, and no equipment, vents, food, that stuff. So no bonuses other than 100% crew and the top the top type of that or configuration of that tank if it's not a premium. Obviously premium is already top. So you come down here, it's got a 390 Alpha, which is the same as the IS-3. It's right up there. No, nothing new there. Penetration is 221, which is at the low end of this crowd. As a matter of fact, the Carnarvon is the only one that's got one point lower. And it's four points lower than a regular IS-3. This is where the controversy of this thing really comes from, to be quite honest. And it's all centered around the way the auto-loading mechanism works on this tank. It is a shorter reload for the first shell, and it is an Italian type of reloader where you can still shoot the first shell before the others get reloaded. So the, or the French tanks, you have to wait for every shell to reload, then you can fire. For the Italian tanks, when you reload the first shell, you can fire it, but it's a much longer reload. However, on the IS-3A, you can shoot the first shell you reload, and oh, by the way, it's just as fast or faster than the others. In fact, at 11.3, it is a faster reload than the standard IS-3 shell, which is 12.75. And that's really, at the end of the day, the crux of the controversy. With the other part of it being 390 alpha three times in a row on a tier eight. We'll talk about that when I get into how this tank plays, but that's one of those things that everyone's irritated by. It's got a minus five depression. I will tell you that's painful. I ran into a lot of problems. I had forgotten about that for the IS-3. I haven't played the IS-3 in a long time, but minus five is where it really gets painful in this game. There's the full load, 42 seconds to get all three shells loaded up. Now, the gun is slightly worse than the regular IS-3, sort of. While it has a .42 dispersion, and the regular IS-3 has .38, and that's worse in class other than the 252U. So if you've played a 252U, you sort of understand the derpiness of that kind of dispersion. However, the IS-3A, aims in 2.75, whereas the object aims in 3.07, and then there's the IS-3 regular, which is 3.26. That was a, that's an interesting decision to me, why they made it zoom in faster than the, the IS-3 is a bit questionable. The dispersion, though, makes it quite derpy. We'll talk about that when I get to the battles with it. But still, at the ranges we fight, and the way the game's fought or played, that dispersion is a lot less important probably than I think uh, they intended it to be. The average damage per minute is 2,080. It's nothing to write home about. The AX is way above it. The Carnarvon is ridiculous. But it is better than things like the T-34. That's right there with the T-26 E-5. And it's quite a bit better, actually, than the Lerva and the 252. So while you look at it and go, eh, it's not that great, it's better than a lot of the other premiums out there and the regular tanks, minus the outliers like the Carnarvon. The Carnarvon duo who have a ridiculous DPM but terrible alpha at 220. Survivability, it actually shows it as the best. Unknown why, <laughs> unknown why a stock turret and a IS-3 chassis deserves 50 hit points more. I can't for the life of me figure that one out. And although I said it was kind of the stock turret, it is, but it's the same numbers. Got the same basic numbers as the IS-3 right there. It just looks different. 
And apparently, uh, it aims faster for some reason than the uh, IS-3 upgraded turret. Yeah, figure that one out, folks. I'm not really sure what was going on there. Actually, I'm going to digress slightly because I, I know exactly what's going on there. They're tweaking the numbers in order to try to balance the tanks, which makes me wonder why they didn't tweak other numbers to make it a little more balanced. Getting into mobility, it's sluggish. It really is has 520 horsepower, whereas the IS-3 has 700. But its top speed, which I can't find for some reason. Why can I not find the speed? Where, there it is. <laughs> its top speed is two miles an hour more than the IS-3, which I can't wrap my mind around. <laughs> Once again, balancing decisions that make little to no sense. Little to no sense. Specific power is at 10.61 and 14.26 with the IS-3. And yet it's two miles an hour faster. But it is a sluggish tank. And going up hills where you're really going to notice that, that ability to grunt itself up the hill is pretty low. It is, it is sluggish and, and is more sluggish than an IS-3. Again, a balancing decision. Attempting to make the chassis that the gun is riding around on a little worse. Because it's got an autoloader with three 390 alpha shots on it. Concealment is high for a tier 8 heavy tank, strangely. I must, I don't know why somehow the Soviet tanks are much more stealthy. Probably has to do with they have a relatively, as compared to the rest of these guys, low silhouette. Relatively, anyway. 365 U-range. So, again, somehow the turret is better than the IS-3 turret, the regular IS-3 turret, as far as U-range goes. 350 is pretty bad for the IS-3 and 365 on the IS-3A is marginally better. So what do we have here? It's interesting. We have we have a mediocre chassis, so the gun is riding around on a mediocre platform. We have a derpy gun, kind of a subpar gun, but we have an overpowered game mechanic, which is a auto-loading gun that can fire faster than the IS-3 can in one shell mode, but given enough time can load up roughly 1,200, slightly under 1,200 burst damage in about 42 seconds. Now does that make the whole package overpowered? We'll talk about that in a moment, about when we talk about overpowered tanks at the end before we talk to the examples. Let's move on to my stats. So how did I do with the overpowered game mechanic, autoloader, the anemic chassis, and the crummy gun combination here? I played 30 battles. I had a 57% win rate with a 1,030 average XP, which is pretty good. At 20 battles, I was 14 and 7 with a 70% win rate. In the last 10 battles, I went 3 and 7. There were two battles where I basically disconnected because I'm running on my still running on my hot spot there were three or four battles where while I was driving I just drove out in front of people as five to nine hundred pings showed up so in all those battles I probably could have saved another three of them if I was not dealing with the and again I, those are just pulling those numbers out of the air so I, I think really this is more of a 60 percent for me type of tank which is actually pretty good 1.41 damage ratio, 2.05 on the destruction. My best game was 4,100, so I really didn't have that breakout, oh my god, this is the most awesome tank, 7,000 damage kind of game. Just didn't happen. Average about 1,915. So let's take a look at the IS-3, which I have a 62% win rate, and I believe I've three marked. So 1,016 experience is comparable. The win rate is comparable. I have 500 battles in IS-3. So 1915 for the IS-3A and 1971 for the IS-3. IS-3 is 1.69 damage and 2.59 destruction, and I'm at 1.41 and 2.05, slightly worse. So in most stats, the IS-3A is a little bit better after 500 battles than I'm doing in the IS-3. I'm sorry, the IS-3 is a little bit better than I'm doing in the is Let's take a look at another tank that I do well in. We'll go ahead and jump up here to the, I'm sorry, not well, but one that I've played recently. So the IS-3 I haven't played for a long time, the ISM. 
managed a 60% win rate in 128 battles. That was a tank I ground from stock, so I do have a lot of stock gains in that one. 986 on the average XP, slightly lower, 60% win rate. 19, 1915 damage on the IS-3A, the ISM, 1740. Probably overperforming my win rate a little bit in that tank, but that tank is a little bit more about its armor than its ability to, to dish out the damage. So not that far off. Not that far off, and nothing about those stats jumps out at me and says, oh my god, this tank is the most overpowered thing that has ever been put into the game. Now, to be fair, that's not really what most people are saying, but it does seem to be close based on the shrillness of some of the screeching that is happening. Like I said, though, before we get started on the replays, I will discuss a little bit about OP tanks. So let's look at my setup first and then get to that. For my setup, you'll notice that I am pretty heavily into try-hard mode. I've got two large kits. I'm carrying extra rations. I've got vents, a vertical stabilizer, and a gun laying drive. Why? Because there is no rammer capability as this is an auto loader, unlike the Italian tanks, which I believe can carry a rammer. This particular Italian-esque reloader does not carry a rammer. That's probably wise on their part because had you been able to throw a rammer and bring the re that first reload down even more, there would have been even more wailing and gnashing of teeth. I carried four, 16, sorry, what is that? I can't see it. 15, 16, whatever it is. APCR, going blind. 9 heat and 3 HE. I actually had a, I had 15, 8, and 2 for some reason for most of the games until I looked down once and noticed it's a three round autoloader, so you're going to want multiples of three usually for your uh, loadouts right there. You can pick two, but if you, like me, I was running around with two HE. When I decided to load HE, it would load two, and then if it went another X seconds, I could have had a third one, but I just didn't have one on board. So it won't load mixed loads. You can't have two HE and then say, hey, load heat on the third one. That would be cool, actually, but it doesn't do that. So be cognizant of that. Other things you can put on, I don't think there's really anything else you would want to put on there because there's no rammer, there's nothing else. This is really the best setup you're going to get right here, and I wouldn't recommend anything other than that. All right, crew, let's talk about that. These are the Christmas crew. I said we'd talk about it in the tech tree. Because it's a bad crew trainer, there are no other three-place Soviet heavy tanks, not at the higher tiers anyway. I don't, maybe there's one down lower, I have no idea tier four or whatever, I don't think so. I went ahead and I just put all the uh, Lieutenant Claws up there and Chill Wind and Winters, which were two of the female crew that you can get on the ornament when you get your festive atmosphere up to 10, like I did very quickly. So I put those three in there. They're actually trained to the IS-3A because I just didn't care. Let's go complete try hard. So he started out, they started out Brothers in Arms, which helped out with the derpiness of the gun, plus the food, helped out quite a bit, and the vents. So all those things pretty much brought down the, the performance, the crew's performance anyway, in regards to the gun as to as good as it could be, minus putting some directives or improved equipment on there. So Brothers in Arms, you can see that they were all trained up to the next skill. So he, the commander had six cents. I had the two shooting things, Smooth Ride and Snapshot on the other two and then you can see that they've trained up repairs for the second two and situational awareness or whatever it is for the vision up here on old Santa Claus. Yep, situational awareness and he's got recon going already up to 83%. So in 30 games with the times fours and all the things that are going on and running boosters and the 50% bonus I have right now for my level 10 festive level they're really cranking out the skills because they're all training their first skill right now, which is pretty good. So that was my setup right there and some of the reasoning behind it. Try hard mode just to see if I could really make this thing overpowered. So there you go. I, I did everything I could really here to make this thing as good as possible based on crew. The only other thing I could have done is found a better crew, you know, a five or six skill crew and throw it on there. Let us go on. Let's talk about OB tanks here for a moment. So before we get to examples of gameplay right here, the big question in everyone's mind is, is this tank overpowered? I am going to say that it is not any more overpowered than some of the other tanks that have been recently 
dropped on the game. Things like the Defender, things like the Scorpion, the E25, which is not a recent thing to be dropped on the game, but has been removed from the from the store for being problematic. I do understand people's view that this just keeps happening and it feels like maybe it's ratcheting up. But I'm going to take a step back and I'm first going to do a little victim blaming here because players want to have good tanks and they whine and complain. I probably shouldn't use the word whine. Complain is fine. You're not necessarily whining just because you don't like something. But they complain that, oh, you released this tank and it's terrible. But then if you release one that's good, they're in trouble because it's because it's overpowered. See, the problem is people don't want to play the mediocre tanks or the tanks that are in the middle. They only want the good tanks. But then they're mad that they're overpowered. Is this thing overpowered? It's not any more overpowered than the tanks I talked about and some others. Uh, down here you can see the M4190 GF. It's clearly an overpowered scout at tier. It's so much better than most every tech tree scout at tier 10, or tier 8, sorry. Probably better than some of the tier 10s, frankly. But no one's really complaining about, about that thing. So they're sprinkled throughout all the tiers and all of the different classes. And that's one of the things that sort of buries a lot of the overpowered nature of different tanks from different classes and different tiers, is that there's a plus three matchmaking, plus two, where you can see tanks well above you. An example of where it was painfully obvious, where where a tier eight premium that was overpowered wasn't buried in the entirety of the game, you know, always being bottom tier was the 268 version four, because it was a tier 10 that was clearly overpowered and it was always top tier. And, and that one was clearly a problem from the very beginning. Last three, the Defender, the Scorpion, some of their overpowered nature at tier gets covered up by the avalanche of tier 10s and tier nines that they see. So frankly, I don't think this thing is any more overpowered than several other tanks. Is it a very good tank? Yes, absolutely. It's a very good tank. Is it, is it cool? Does it have some capabilities that a very good player can take advantage of? Clearly. Are there lots of other tanks that very good players can do that with? Clearly. So I don't think it's really anything new under the sun. Now, I will say there's one part of it that is broken, if not overpowered. I'm not going to call it overpowered because the entire package put together kind of limits its effectiveness. Not kind of, it does. The auto-loading mechanism where it reloads slightly faster than an IS-3 when it's on its first shell is ridiculous. It, it is. It's not ruining the game. It's not destroying everything. It's not the end of what because they put it in the game. It's just dopey. I kind of understand some of the reasoning behind why they would do it. It would be a pretty anemic tank. I think maybe if they did it the way that the Italian reloaders do it because of the derpy nature of the gun, but they've tried to balance it that way by making the reloading mechanism a little better, but the rest of the package kind of average to crap. But it doesn't really work that way. The problem is, as usual, they don't really understand how their game is played. And a bad player is going to have a hard time leveraging a lot of that broken nature of the auto-loading mechanic. So at the end of the day, it's probably going to be much ado about nothing, and it's nothing's going to change. One one thing you're going to we're going to have to watch is how are the stats after it's been changed. The, the problem is you've got a huge set, of, not huge because nobody played the thing, but let's call it a fairly large set of stats from when it was just a regular IS-3A. And because it didn't split or become something else, it was just a rework of a premium, then we're going to have to make sure when you're looking at the stats and want to know if it's overperforming that you started at the right point where it switched over to an IS-3, a auto loader mechanism kind of thing. Last thing I'll say about it is, that is interesting to me is the it was a premium. They are loath to nerf to nerf premiums, so clearly they didn't nerf this one. It, it is very much better than the old IS-3A. That's that's true, one hundred percent true. Bottom line, what is it? Crappy chassis, gun platform, 
crappy gun, broken auto-loading mechanic. That basically encapsulates this tank. Is it fun? Yeah, can be. Let's look at some of the replays. We'll start with a top tier battle here on Lakeville. You know, 357, this is a great setup for this tank. One interesting thing about the, an auto loader like this, and somebody mentioned it actually on the forums, I wish you could remember who it was, but they said, you know, with this tank, you don't really mind taking shots at scouts as they're raging around because you just have another shot to take right away. And while I will say that's true, notice that it doesn't really carry that much ammunition. I never ran out in the 30 battles that I had. I never came too close, but if it went on for a while and you spent a lot of time taking little snapshots at light tanks, you could pretty easily run out. I mean, there's only, what, 25, 20, 28 shells in the entire tank. So pretty quickly I've reloaded, and here's top tier. Here's one of the arguments about this tank being overpowered. Right now, I have about 1,200, slightly less than, burst damage that I can drop on somebody which means I can just about take out a tier 8 heavy. You see the derpy nature of this. I think I actually put one in here, but I just let that zoom in. It takes a while. That's a miss. Let's see if we can hit him. Boom. That one went into him. And I shoot into the rock. So there's an example of, you know what, I probably wasted that last shot right there. I mentioned it earlier. I was still running the 1482, which is a terrible setup for this auto-loading tank that carries three shells or can load three shells at once so make sure you've got multiples of three in there we'll come into the town I had quite a few tanks go into the valley over there so I wanted to be very careful about what I was doing I didn't want to rage in it's just me and easy eight and a kv2 so like any tank you can get easily overwhelmed but unlike many tanks this is3a can really put the pain on any of their overextending tanks very quickly and then within 11 seconds or so have another shell to drop 390 on people. Let's take a look at here, there's the IS-6. Boom. Now here's an interesting thing about this autoloader with this big alpha. I cannot tell you how many ammo racks I had. It was a lot. A lot more than usual. And the Alpha is big enough. In fact, it, this must be one of the largest Alpha autoloaders minus the French TDs that there are in the game and some of the higher tier tanks. Because you can pretty quickly punch shells into the exact same spot, it tends to break ammo racks and then blow them up. Just overwhelming the modules. So it's one of the interesting little advantages that I found on this tank. So we've got three shells. They're losing pretty hard. Our push in the valley has actually got up towards their cap. The charioteer is camping back there. That's helpful. That's one of their other tier eights. And I know their IS-3 and IS-6 are here, and the IS-3 just got hammered and died. So we are really in control right here. I haven't done a whole bunch. A little 950 right there killing a, a tier 6. <laughs> And I find this poor guy. There's a shot, and I have an auto loader, so I just drive in and I put there's another hammer blow on that guy. And here comes the I6. And I put a spap on the I6, and he's able to, because I over angle right there, drop a shot into my front end there. So I see him coming. I'm able to act like a standard IS3 right there. Put a shot right on him, and I back up. So that's just the flexibility of this tank. And I'm about to have another shot. The longer he goose around, if I can entice him to do it for 10 seconds, another 7 seconds, I'm going to have another shot. But he goes ahead and comes around. I put a shot onto him. And again, because it auto lo or it loads so fast, I'm able to get in back into the fight. Now, this guy does a nice job and is able to get his gun reloaded in time. I try to sneak one in there, but that was never going to pan. He's going to come right in there. Try to get my front up to him. There we go. And we'll just punch straight through the hatch. 
We made a bit of a comeback, but we're in pretty good shape here. I start pushing in towards the T-45 or whatever the heck that thing is right there. Because I know about the time that I get here and get situated. Side scraping. I should have my two shells, and that's what I want. And he gets away. He's still a two-shot, so that's fine. I'm going to back up until I've got it reloaded. There's the O-1. And we'll just go ahead and push down in here and get this guy out. You see how high the gun bounces up right there? Because of that minus five, I had to be careful of even that kind of broken, smashed vehicle right there would knock the gun up high enough that I would not be able to get a shot off. And pretty easy to, to dominate top tier. The other team wasn't really that good. The auto-loading mechanism really gives you some options. Especially in the trading department. Now, plus it's got pretty good ammo. You'll notice, look, I've got only two shots in there right now. Put him down. Dope. Trying to get up under there. I knew that GW was going to take a shot. Like I was talking about with the auto loading, that gives you some options. Especially on trading. If you're going to pop out and you know you're going to take a hit. If you've got three shells and you know you can take them down for the hit, that's a great option to have. Whereas if you were a standard IS-3... He'll pop out, trade, maybe get a shot on him, and then depending on what his reload is, he may get another shot on you before you can take him down. But with the auto loader, somewhere around 1,200, anything about your tier that's wounded, and even a wounded tier 9 is going to have a really hard time with you if they can't get you out. I thought for sure that GW was going to kill me right there. 2916 is making a runner. And he gets blasted by the artillery. And down goes the artillery. Charioteer is still up here. And we have to play a little bit of Ring Around the Rosie with this guy. Got the O1 above, the Yog Panther. I'm going to come down this way. I'm a one-shot. The Charioteer is reloaded now, so I do want, don't want to go running around this corner and get shot in the side before I can get my gun online. So I'm trying to be a little bit clever. Where is he? He's fired. I should have gone straight in right there. As soon as I heard that shot go off, I should have started moving. But I feel like he's around the corner, so that actually worked out. Let's see if we can get a shot on him. I'm worried about the artillery a little bit. He's turned to look at me. And the O1 gets a clue, which is nice. There's the artillery. Why not? The O1's coming around behind him. And down he goes. We don't see the artillery after that. So five kills. That shot earlier that was the blind shot did go in. So it was 4,100 or so damage. Like any good tier 8 heavy, a 357 top tier is going to probably go well for you if you play any kind of decently. Is it slightly overpowered or overpowered in tier? Yes, but so is the Defender, multiple other tanks. Let's move on to the next one. Next battle is here on Ensk, and I am bottom tier, but only in a two-tier battle. So tier nines and tier eights. Come over here, respond into the south side. It is an encounter battle. I'm trying to break these things down so I can see what's going on. And as usual, it's going to show up to the battle based on most maps with all three shells ready to go. So we'll come around here. I got regular APCR. Let's see if I can get some shots. There's a bounce. Nice reload, there's a bounce, and we'll back out. And that's kind of the strength of an autoloader. He's able to take two in there and then get on out. Let's 
switch over to the heat. Let's start spamming the gold. Are you 251 coming in? Here comes the JT, he's driving along. He fires at the Chrysler K, so I'm going to come on in here and see if I can get a shot on him. There we go, sneak one in. T54E1's working on Chrysler's putting his side armor to everybody there for some reason. Couldn't quite see him. Couldn't get a silhouette, so I decided to try to knock some stuff down. That was a wasted shot. Here comes an 8.8. Put a shot into that guy. T54E1's getting hit. 251 misses. And we've got another IS-3A around the corner. So I'm going to turn around and get around, fall back just a little bit and try to take a different angle here. Our JT is coming along as well. I'm a little bit worried he was going to pop around and hit me. So come around this corner. We've got an IS-3A right there. Got two shells in. There's one, but it bounces because we get an angle. And that is a bummer. Now the Carnarvon's kind of got a problem here because if I sit there long enough and I'm able to get all three shells, I may be able to clip this guy out. So I'm just working it right now, trying to get my reload going on. Break that down, there he is. See if I can bait a shot while I'm getting into position. It reloads fast, so we're going to be careful here. We can take a shot, a little sc scooch, there we go. And you can see that now I'm reloading two shells instead of one. He takes a shot. And it's that derpy nature of the gun. See a couple more examples of that right there. Popping out and shooting is not really this thing's strong suit. And I have one shell. And that, there's a just mishandling of the auto auto loading mechanic right there that I only have one shot. I don't really notice it until about right now. When I thought I should have two more shots, I could have gone in and killed off that 251 with regular APCR. But now I've got to be a little bit more careful. He falls back, not wanting to eat any more shots. But he gets one more. And that's that strength of the reload mechanic where it's just 11 seconds or so on that first shell. We're doing okay in the city. We're not doing that great over here. we got a Ferdy and me, and the Carnarvon is still alive over there. Canafrin. He's fired. But he's actually about reloaded right about now. I get hung up on this thing. And the snapshot works out for me on that one. I don't really know what this T-44 has been doing the whole game as we're attempting to win it. He's been sitting more or less in that same spot right there. I really want to get out this Tiger too if I can. Come around here, I'm thinking, yep, I'll just come in here and kill this guy. And No, I don't know. Either I hit that Hit that bar or I bounced it, not really sure. He did not bounce though, so I'm accepting another shot, unfortunately. Take him down. And I've been passed. I got passed by the rev. 251's back there. Can't quite get oh man, and the GW it puts 325 on me, and I make a really bad move right here. Kind of getting in between all these guys. So I've left the 251 behind me, and I've com come back over here to fight these two. The Rev's going to put a little pump on me, and I somehow sneak one in there. And down I go. I was surprised the 251 didn't show up much earlier, and the T-44 is still sitting over there in basically the same spot. 3,225. You saw some of the derpy nature of the gun even close in. But you also saw the snapshot right there. So based on the ranges the game has played and the way the game's played, that the balancing for the broken autoloader part of the tank doesn't really affect it too much, except for on some few maps. But you will miss some of those snaps like I did earlier because you see how large the dispersion circle is while you're moving and moving your turret. We actually end up coming back, I believe, and winning this game at the end. Let's move on to the last one, the bottom tier example. All 
All right, here we are on Monastery, or Abbey, sorry. Abbey, Abbey. Spawn into the south side, headed over to the west bottom tier. I go ahead and hit skill to begin with. And we're going to come around the corner. We've got a FB and a T110E5. Our T57, Patton, and T10 are already here. Kind of pushed them back a little bit. The FV is side scraping. The T57 is punishing. Here comes artillery. So let's just go ahead and sneak in here and see if we can just... Hey, gun's not that derpy, Guido. Well, that's kind of my point. That's a medium range shot, and those are going to hit. I get hit by him. Keep on moving. And we're looking for a shot onto that guy. And I make another mistake. So let me just drive out in front of everybody. But I light him on fire. And I'm able to get out of the way there. And I'm waiting for the reload. It does take a while. I mean, it's a good 40 seconds just to get three shells out of it. See the T1. T110 moving, so I'll just shoot at him as I go. I know I'm going to get a reload here, so I'm not that worried about that. T10 follows up. We got to push down below, so we really got these guys back on their back heel. Some shots behind me into the middle. For a moment, I thought I might get a shot on the 430, but that's not going to happen. Switch back around. T110's got to turn because he's got trouble. Pop out, take advantage of that, right on his turret. Tiger 2 is dead, and then we've got the T-10 backing up. So as a support tank, in amongst the other tier 10s and things, can be quite devastating. But you've got to time the pops, obviously. You don't want to pop out while they're all reloaded. Just as you would not do in any tier 8, to be quite honest, with tier 9s and 10s around. But the difference is you're able to drop three 390 alpha shots on people. So I'm going to come out here, see what we get. Somewhere there's a Panther 2 hanging out here. Thought I might catch him on the edge, but I don't see him. There he goes. So he's making a runner, swing the boop. Not a whole lot of aim, but that's the nice thing there. You've got another shell. That doesn't go in, but it does track him. And we put one more 390 shot on him. So that is one of the things about an auto loader that is a, definitely a strength. You've got situations where, like where that Panther's running across, you get a shot, you get damage. You get another shot, you got him tracked. I'm getting assist damage. You get another shot, you drop it on him. And then 11 seconds later, you, you're an IS-3 again. Show you what I'm doing here. Got a couple shots on the Mar Breaker. Really much like other auto loaders in the game. When it works, it really works well. When it doesn't, because the chassis, the, the gun, the, the system that the gun's mounted on is kind of crummy. And the derpiness of the gun, the gun itself is kind of crummy. That can be a limiting factor. Get hammered by the other IS-3A over there. And fortunately, I bounce one, which is one reason why you turn your turret towards people who are shooting you. I'm not sure if it was my turret. Just shoot at him on the approach. Here he comes. I have no idea. Must have been the hatch. <laughs> Now, that is another interesting thing about an autoloader like this. I probably wouldn't have taken that shot if it was just a single shot IS-3. Because you shoot, you miss, or I would have thought I was miss. I didn't think I was going to pin, but had I not pinned, now you're worried about the guy rushing you and getting a shot before you can get reloaded. But with the autoloader, not so much. Down goes that guy. I do not believe I get any more shots. So that is the last example. Two thousand eight hundred and twenty-seven damage, four kills. Being kind of the uh, cleanup guy. 
popping out when I know I can't be shot. Standard autoloader tactics, really, when you're running this thing. With a slight difference that it's got some armor. Now, I sort of feel about the Suma SM like I do about this tank. In certain situations, it is it can certainly be overpowered, but I referenced the discussion at the beginning of the video about what does overpowered mean in this game when it's a tier 8 and you see a lot of tier 10s. The meta changes, matchmaker may change soon, so some of those problems with this game mechanic as it's mech may come out in the future. Well, let's wrap this thing up. There you have it, the IS-3A, a review in three games played. Talked a little bit already about the controversy around it, whether it's OP, that kind of thing. I didn't overperform in the tank. I, I did have some challenges with ping in my connection. I think I probably would have done a little bit better. I think it's a good tank. I think it's overpowered at tier, but the tiering system in this game covers a lot of the sins of overpowered tanks, unless they happen to be tier 10, a la the 268v4 ridiculousness. Is it a continuation of the ratcheting up, potentially, of what we call powerful tanks or tier 8s that are better than the tech tree versions? Yeah, it probably is. Is it going to ruin the entire game and bring it down in a flaming heap? No. Did it really uh, rustle the, uh, the stuff of some <laughs> community contributors? Absolutely. I think there was a huge overreaction. I think separating this thing out of the, the loot box thing, to a large extent, puts a better perspective on the IS-3 on what, what it really means to the game. I am on board with the idea that it, it is a bit irritating that they were in the loot boxes and that was kind of the only way to get them. But I believe it's probably going to be sold and available in other ways later on. So again, the, the long-term perspective has to be there. Still, it was obviously in the boxes to help sell the boxes. So at the end of the day though, when I look at it and I think about how companies make money and what they do to incentivize things, that it's, not, it's neither surprising nor that it, does it really bother me that much, to be quite honest. Now, it may be easy for me to say since I was given one to do content on and, and rightfully so, that's a valid criticism of my commentary as I'm sitting here looking at one in the garage and I'm able to play it and other people can't because they bought 50 boxes or 75 or 300 and didn't end up winning the tank because it's gambling which I've done a whole nother video on so bottom line like I said before crummy chassis it's a it's a bad gun platform terrible gun the gun is, is just bad overall the auto-loading mechanism is overpowered. Sorry, broken. <laughs> See, it even creeps up into my commentary at times. That's pretty much all there is to say about it. It's it's not the uh, doom of Valeria. The, the world is not falling because the IS-3A has showed up. It was probably not handled really great overall. I would have liked to have seen it been a little bit weaker. If it was a little bit weaker... I think we'd have heard a lot less about the loot box thing, interestingly, because nobody's really screaming about the E25, which is clearly overpowered in its tier and has been removed from the store because of that, although it does unfortunately keep popping up as a gift and prize and things like that. I hope they make it available to everybody at some point in the near future, maybe after this event, so that people have access to it in the whole discussion about it's only gained through the evil loot boxes can go away that would probably be a good idea in fact where i were gaming right now i would actually put it into the store and who knows maybe one of the advent items later on what do we have eight seven or eight days left until christmas it may show up if they're wise it will that would put to rest a lot of this. All right, that's all I got for the review of the IS-3A. We will see ya.